Well, it's been almost 20 years since we got to see Marvel's web-slinging superhero on the big screen for the first time. And that, of course, is Spider-Man. I've seen all these movies, and I just saw the brand new one, Spider-Man No Way Home, now playing in theaters. But is old webhead's newest venture into the MCU another web-slinging super cool adventure of a hit? Or is... Oh, Webhead just hanging on by a tiny little thread. Watch this spoiler-free review and find out. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Nuff said. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duol, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a spoiler-free review of the just-now-released new superhero flick, Spider-Man No Way Home, released by Columbia, along with Marvel Studios. This, of course, is the 27th film in the MCU, and and the third film of Spy in the MCU, but of course this would be the 8th overall. Well, no, wait, scratch that, take that back, ninth. Overall Spider-Man film, counting the Amy in to the Spider-Verse. <laughs> Into the Spider-Verse, excuse me. Anyway, John Watts is back as the director, and Chris McKinnon and Eric Summers wrote the script. Tom Holland's back as our title character, along with Zendaya, Jacob Ballon, John Favreau, and Marissa Tomei all returning. Plus, we also have... Benedict Cumberbatch, Jamie Foxx, Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, Benedict Wong, plus Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, the, uh, the original Spider-Man and the more recent Amazing Spider-Man back. Well, I'm only going to give you just a heads up on just a little bit on the plot. This time around, Peter Parker as Dr. Stephen Strange, who of course will be seeing his long-awaited new second movie next year make his to make his identity as Spider-Man a secret again with magic following its public revelation in the last in the end of the last film but this breaks open the multiverse allowing five supervillains from alternate realities who have fought their own versions of Parker to enter his universe that's all I'm telling you I'm not telling you no more I will not give you heads up on what you're going to be seeing all I'll tell you is, you will, you must stay through the movie to see a mid credit scene and a coda. Of course, it's a post credit scene. But I'm not telling you what those are either. I will not be spoiling this whole movie. Mm -mm. So anyway... This film was just so awesome. I loved it. It was just a superb blast. From start to finish. Michael Giacchino, or how the heck you pronounce that, I apologize if I mispronounced it. His score for this was really good. Well, apparently this is really cool. And I gotta say... Now, I like the story for the film, how well this plot and the story is. The whole movie was just so cool. I mean, it just had such good action sequences. As I've read from so far what the um, critics are saying, of course, the film's currently at 94% on the Tomato Mirror at Ryan Tomatoes. Yes, which gives by another big certified fresh flick. Yeah. Uh, according to the to the site's critical consensus, it reads that a bigger, bolder Spider-Man sequel, No Way Home, expands the franchise's scope and stakes while losing sight of its humor and heart, which I totally agree. And Cinema Score gave this an A plus, very rare, and what have you. Yeah, that's the first time a Spider-Man movie. Uh, well, the first live action Spider film to ever. To earn that score was the second Spider Man movie. 
and the fourth MCU film overall after the Avengers, Black Panther and Avengers Endgame got that. And I gotta say, this was so good. We have some pretty good performances here. I love the performances we got from um, Tom Holland as Spidey, the Spidey we now know as. Zendaya is back as MJ, Michelle. And, um... Jacob Ballon is Peter's best friend. Ned Leeds is back in this, too. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, um... But it was great to have some of these people in this. Bandit Cumberbatch as Dr. Stephen Strange. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, this was... He was just so good. John Favreau back as... Harold Happy Hogan. Marissa Tomei is May Parker, Peter Hand. But now I will say it's really cool to have having Toby McGuire of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy and Andrew Garfield, who I thought he wasn't going to come back, but it seems I think somebody was just being a troll or something like that telling us he wasn't interested. But he's back too, and well... Holland's peer refers to Toby's spy as peer two and um, Andrews as peer three. That's the only bit of heads up I'm giving you, but that's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not talking about much more, but um, now we have um, Willem Dafoe as Norman Osborn, alias the Green Goblin from the first film, Alfred Molina as Dr. Otto Octavius, aka Dr. Octopus, Spider Man 2. And Jamie Foxx is Max Dillon, alias Electro, which actually looks much better than what he, than he did in Amazing Spider-Man 2. I mean, now he gets a better look later on in the movie. He still looks the same, though, at first, but soon, much better. Well, because his original blue appearance was more um, the ultimate Marvel base design. So, now I can understand what was. Bandit Wong is back as Wong, Stranger's mentor. Yeah, Tony Revolori is back as Flash Thompson. Okay, and of course we do have others back. Including, um, Rhys Ivins as Dr. Kirk Connors, a lizard, and Thomas Hayden Church as Flint Marco, the Sandman. Now, which, speaking of the lizard, that's kind of one of my slight downsides with the film. The CGI on the lizard is, eh, alright. Not, not as good as it was in Amazing Spider-Man 2. They tried to do their extreme best. But you do, you will see some familiar faces throughout the film, but that's all I'm telling you. I'm only giving you just a little bit of what you'll see, but that's it. I'm not giving you no more Easter eggs. No more things, not even an Easter egg of a special appearance from anybody else, unless you do recall seeing from the previous movies or from other recent MCU stuff, you know. But that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to bring up no more on this. Anyway, I got to say, it was just an absolute blast. The action was absolutely good. The atmosphere was good. The cast was great. The, at the action was good. I may have re repeated myself if I did. Sorry for sounding like a broken record. The... Oh, I don't know what to tell you. Everything was good. It's just that the CGI used for Lizard was kind of a slight downside. They The same thing was used with um, Doc Ox. Mechanical arms, but I actually didn't find much of anything wrong with that. <laughs> and again, the score is good too. So anyway, I think Spider-Man No Way Home is not bad. I think this is easily the best of the MCU Spidey flicks. Now don't worry, they did talk about continuing Tom Holland's Spider-Man stories later on, because they've announced three more movies, so we'll hope for the best we get to see some more villains from the spy world into the, in this. Okay, and of course, I do know they're currently work. that Sony Pictures Animation is currently working on um, the Into the Spider-Verse sequel, so we'll hope for the best that'll come out 
sometime down the road. But again, back to No Way Home. I loved it. It was awesome. It was cool. It was epic. It was spectacular. It had so many twists and turns. Some pulse-pounding action. Everything. It's humor and heart. The humor and heart of this was good and what have you. Well, you know that. Well, I think you understand what I'm saying. So, this is a film you gotta go see. See it while you still can. Nah, I'm just kidding. There, it's just that got released. So, you see it. I don't care what you think. You gotta go see this movie. Alright, enough said. So, with everything said, I'm gonna give Spider-Man No Way Home 5 stars. Which means on a scale of 1 to 10... It's easily going to get a 10. Most definitely. <laughs> Anywho, so what are your thoughts on Spider-Man No Way Home? You can tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of a film that's turning 20 tomorrow, which will be The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Thank you for watching, and if you like this, you may want to consider checking out my reviews for these re the most recent attempts in the MCU. Uh, now, as you might see, I, I put cards for the previous two Spider-Man films, just in case you didn't watch them early on, alright? But anyway, catch what you might have missed or see him again with my spoiler-free reviews for the last three films in the MCU. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of Black Widow. The upper right-hand corner is my review of Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings. And the bottom left-hand corner, well, I decided, nah, not, I don't want to include Eternals, so the so the heck with that. Just see the first two. Uh, so in the bottom left-hand corner is my spoiler-free review of the most recent Marvel flick that Sony did, and that being Venom, Let There Be Carnage. May, may not be part of the MCU, but still awesome. In the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe to my channel. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and until next time, true believers, I'm the Big D saying, see ya, and Excelsior! Bye now.